Now, from across the Tri-States, this is KHQA Sports. Tip top in the evening, everybody, and welcome to Sports Final. It's week four, a night rife with intense football atmospheres in Mount Sterling, Carthage, and Shelbina, but none bigger than the goings on tonight at Flint Stadium. And since my kindergarten report card gave me high marks for being a good sharer, I will let the Blue Devil alum feel this one. Well, thank you, Chris. And uh, what a way to open the Western Big Six Conference slate for Rick Little's crew. Undefeated, state ranked Rock Island here on homecoming. Let's take you to the highlights. Second quarter action. Big crowd fired up for this one. Second quarter devils down 14 to 7. They would get the run game going here. It's Connor Kelly. Look at the sell here on the keeper. He gets it out to the right sideline. Big, big gain down to Rock Island territory on the 40 yard line. That's a first down. Later on, the reverse to Cameron Adams. Looks like he's going to punch one into the corner. He gets down to about the five yard line. That would set up Malik Robbins here, knocking on the door about a yard out. He punches his way through. QHS 14 13 at that point. PAT was blocked. And look at Robbins here on this one, limping just a little bit. The ankle bothering him, but the crowd fired up as the Devils down by one at halftime. And look at D'Angelo Dean there in the homecoming court. The King has returned from <laughs> last year. And now, check it out, third quarter here. Malik Robbins, interesting play here. Mentioned that ankle was a little tender for him. Look at the Rock Island players here. Not sure if there was some extra contact. He was very slow to get up. Rick Little, though, pleading his case, looking for a flag. Wouldn't get it. Blue Devils just can't make the plays they need down the stretch. They fall to Rock Island tonight by a final of 21 to 13. And real quick, want to show you our qualifier for the grill giveaway at the end of the season. It is Nathan Fleer of Quincy, Illinois. So congratulations to Nathan. He may just win that grill when it's all said and done. Chris. High drama tonight in Peoria. Highlights of this one, we hope, coming up for you tomorrow in overtime. Q&D scores with 27 seconds left on the Wyman Cat and gets the victory tonight over PND 21 to 17. The Raiders desperately needed that one on the evening. Let's move on now. Oh, they were calling it the Wild West shootout in Hancock County tonight. And was it ever wild between the Chargers and the Titans? Two teams who have a little bit of offense in the repertoire. We start you off second play from scrimmage. Brighton Smith is off to the races. This of 51 yards made it six to nothing Chargers before you could blink in this ball game. But we're not done, not by a long shot. Maybe the wildest first quarter I've seen in a long time, if not ever. Start you off with the scoring there on the ensuing kickoff. The Titans go to work. It would be Jordan White who'd play a major, major role in this first quarter. White fields it, takes it all the way back to the 50 yard line. Great return, short field. That sets up Coy Dorothy rather nicely to do what he does. That's go to the air, and he is going to do so coming up with a pass play right here that's going to be nothing shy of really well executed. It's Mr. Dorothy hooking up with the aforementioned Jordan White. Touchdown, and at this point, the Titans have tied the score at six apiece. The PATs for both teams had failed. Here we go again, ensuing possession. Alani West back off at it, and it is Alex Appel, the big muscular guy, just working his way into the end zone from six yards out. That makes it 12 to six, Alani West. Then on the ensuing two-point conversion, how about Appel again? Oh, it's a peel from Appel as he goes in, makes it a 14-6 game there. Oh, the little ones, they love it in this one, but we're not done. Ensuing possession, Colby Shilson going to take a short swing pass and spin out of three tackles, and he is off to the races for the score right there. Made it 14 to 12. The two-point conversion would fail. All of this still in the first quarter. Wild scoring affair. Ben Giddings and Illini West win a game that had 90 total points in it. Illini West gets the victory tonight. Final count in this one, 56 to 34. On to the scoreboard now from the West Central Conference. McComb, a winner tonight over Orion, 22 to 20. Big win at home for the Bombers on the evening. Also coming up tomorrow, highlights on overtime of Pittsfield, Griggsville, Perry, and Bunker Hill. They will play at 1 o'clock. Pittsfield, a heavy favorite in the ball game. Ross. We'll take you to now. It is Brown County and Central Southeastern. A blue moon out in Brown <laughs> County tonight. No, just kidding. The camera filter a little bit screwy with us, but still some great highlights to show you. That was a big touchdown run there by Braxton Phelps, putting the Hornets up by a touchdown, but Central Southeastern would answer in this one. That's Bobby Kelts pushing one across the line. Slugfest early on, but when it's all said and done, this game goes to Central in your final score as uh, it was Central taking this one. 35 to 19. Apologies again for the malfunctioning camera. First time since 2004, and the camera doesn't work. Go figure that one. <laughs> now we'll take it to Triopia and ISD. It was a big win over Brown County last week for Triopia. That started off with a Derek Shoney kick return. 
Well, guess what? He does it again right into your living room. He is off to the races. This one very well done again. Derek Shoney, nothing but speed on that play as he breaks away. Later on, quarterback Tanner Huddleston. He's looking deep to Dakota Longley. Wide open right sideline that time. Triopia puts another one on the board. And then again, we'll go Huddleston, who was very good in this one. He's going to find Shoney once again. A little short pass. And Triopia really had no problems tonight with ISD. They get the big win tonight on the road. All right, moving on, Ross. We've got more for you. Unity in action tonight at home against Route. What do you got, big guy? See the Mustangs running out there. This one, a matchup you kind of liked going into this one early on, though. Good stop by the Mustang defensive line. Route would be forced to punt, and that is when Unity got to work. Quarterback Thomas Donnelly gives it to Scott Beck, but Route, they return the favor on the tackle for loss. Kind of tough to get going early in this one, but then the Mustangs, they got a big run from Alex Blickhan here. It was a third down, 22 yards to go, and Blickhan breaks one out. He is gone just about to the house. He gets down to about the 10 yard line, and that would set up Mr. Scott Beck once again. He's going to get oh so close here, and then he would get the payoff with the touchdown as well. He would score there. Unity goes on to beat Routes tonight. Good win for them. Final score was 13 to nothing over the Major, Rockets. major upset in that game. Good win for the Mustangs and Carl Asbury's crew. Elsewhere tonight, an upset brewing in the fourth quarter. Pleasant Hill, who hadn't scored a point all season, leading West Central 29 to 14. We'll update you with a final coming up just a bit. Hey, we've got more for you tonight. Jacksonville, Central State 8 action. Emotionally charged night tonight after the death of beloved basketball coach Bobby Hoffman earlier today. The Crimsons, boy, you know what? I wouldn't have traded places with Southeastern tonight or Southeast for all the whiskey in Ireland because the Crimsons came out amped and ready to win one for Bobby. And right off the bat, it's Bryce Schnitker here to the big fella, Dalton Keene. Big pickup for him. More to come in this one. It will be Dalton Keene again. Schnitker, maybe not as accurate as he was last week. Nobody on the planet was when he went 10 for 11, but great touchdown there. All about the goodness tonight from the defensive line for the Crimsons, and then the defense picks it up again. It's pick six time in this one from Cody Wood as the Crimsons just roll tonight over Southeast. Final count in this one sees them victorious, 53 to 13. And again, our condolences to the family of Bobby Hoffman and the entire Crimson family. Elsewhere on the docket tonight from Illinois, Beardstown hangs on to beat Havana, who was undefeated, 14 to 13. Also, BPCA and Peoria Heights, no score on that one yet. We can tell you that Elmwood Brimfield buried uh, Rushville Industry, 55 to nothing, and no score yet from West Prairie and Star County. Hannibal on the road tonight, invading Mexico, and the Pirates got work done in this one from the first quarter on. It was really never a contest in this ballgame. It will start with Mitch Nichols. The Bulldogs not a really good team, and you will see why right here as Mitch Nichols going to break free, work his way down the left sideline, and he is gone, taking off for the touchdown. But we're not done yet. The Hannibal Pirate defense tonight for them, the price is right. Justin Price with a pickoff right there, and that would set up the passing game for the Pirates in this one. Dalton Powell going to hook up in just a second with Elijah Harrison. All Pirates all the time in this one as they get the blowout win on the road. 41 to 14 was your final there. Elsewhere on the docket tonight, we've got Macon losing at Clark County, 42 to 21. The Indians go to 4 and 0 on the season. Highlights of that one for you coming up tomorrow on overtime. Big one tonight in Northeast Missouri. South Shelby Centralia going at it. It was a defensive affair early in this ball game. Pick it up right here. First quarter, South Shelby's Trace Windsor is stripped by Jason Anders. Blair Thal recovers despite having one hand in a cast. That's pretty darn good stuff from him right there. More to come right here. Pocket collapsing right here. But that's Zach Etzler finding Dixon Dollins for the 43-yard pickup at that one. Centralia, though, trying to go deep. Adam Ellison having other ideas. The one-eyed jack of Tri-State football going to work in this one with the interception to stymie Centralia. Wild game in this one. We can tell you in the end it was Centralia pulling away in the second half and pulling off the victory. 28-6. Centralia still undefeated, but they have not looked invulnerable in getting there to this point. More for you tonight. Palmyra and Highland, Ross. We'll take you to Kevin Miles' crew coming off that big win against South Shelby. Early on, not a lot of room to work. You'll see Wes Cramsey here. A short game, but that was one of the biggest pickups we saw in the first half. All defense in this one. It would be Ben Altoff and Will Funkenbush helping stuff the run. As I mentioned, not much breathing room for either side there in that first half. Now, Panthers on O. Brock Butler saw he was so shifty last Last week tries to get away, but a great tackle there by Josh Middleberg hanging on to the shoelace. And then the Highland D would step up. Gavin Jett gets around the corner, sacks Butler, and that would set up a big play coming just a couple of seconds later. Dalton Sparks, you'll see 
Brock Butler here firing deep sparks a beautiful interception there as he pulls it in, but it would be Palmyra scoring in the second half in this one. They get the win. Final was 21 to 8 over the Cougars. That game was just 2 to nothing at the half to tell you what kind of night it was there. Brookfield today keeps Monroe City winless. 40 to 10 was your final there. Elsewhere in Missouri, we've got Knox County winning big again. Donovan Edwards over 200 yards of total offense. Big day for him. Salisbury buries North Shelby. 49 to nothing was your final there. More scores for you. Scotland County at Henry County. That game played in Fayette. No score yet. At last check, Clopton Ellsbury leading Principia 44 to 36. That in the fourth quarter. And Van Farr now 2 and 2 on the season. Break up the Indians. They win tonight 28 to 14. Keokuk Chiefs at home and trying to get the job done. Fairfield scored early. Gabe Vandenberg having none of it. He was not happy, so he'd go to work in this one. A little swing pass, and Darian Sanders going to take it to the house. 38 yards in for the score. The Keokuk defense going to be strong behind that as well in this game. Fourth down and goal to go. Actually, fourth and 12, I should say. Fairfield to the air. My man Chris Barkcliff having none of it. He and Bryce Baxter had a bunch of guys back there breaking that up. Dan Williams in there as well. Keokuk goes to work. It's uh, Gabe Vandenberg with a swing pass here to Dan Williams. That would set up a touchdown run from Trevor Roth. Roth left with what they believed to be was a broken bone in his foot. No word yet on the finality of that. Keokuk, though, 28 unanswered points down the stretch. They blow away Fairfield to get to 2-2. Two and two. Final count was 42-14. to 14. The news not so good for Fort Madison, however. Fort Madison, a loser tonight in a heartbreaker against Mount Pleasant, 15-14. to 14. Ross, some soccer scores. We'll take it to uh, Mark Twain today. They lose to Centralia 3 to nothing actually in softball there. And also Quincy University, big win over Bellarmine, 2-1, to one, two ranked teams. And the men win as well, 2-1. to one, that, that is the final there as well. Huge overtime coming up tomorrow at 10-30. We'll see you then, everybody.